Okay. Grace and peace multiply to you and yours in knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the Most High God, the Savior to those that keep His commandments. It is uh, Sunday, December 31st, 2017. Hope everyone had a wonderful Sabbath yesterday. I know I did. Thank God He allowed us to wake up and see another day with His precious breath of life. Now, I'm coming to you today to bring a short lesson because there are some misconceptions going on among Israel <laughs> that uh, women will not make it into the kingdom. They say that women, <laughs> women, uh, only men going to make it into God's kingdom. And we know according to scripture that's a lie. I mean, common sense tell you that. God is not a respecter of persons, so we all got a chance at salvation. And I'm going to show you and prove that in the scriptures. So if you got your Bibles, open up to the New Testament, 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1, and I'm going to start with verse 3. Verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy have begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Verse 4, to, the, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled. See, we have an inheritance to those that serve the Lord the way he had it written. We got an inherit, uh, inheritance coming to us. That's if we come out of the world, if we keep his laws, statutes, and commandments, <laughs> if we keep his feast days. It's a big if. If we keep his dietary law. We follow the ways of the Lord and he will give us long life now and in the future. Now let me, let me finish this. <clears throat> I'm going to finish verse 4. Reserved in heaven for you. Whoa. So it's if it's reserved in heaven for you, that means we don't have it now, right? It's reserved in heaven. And the Lord tells us in Revelation, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according to his work shall be. Keep in mind, man is a species. So, that means male or female. God is not a respecter of persons. Verse 5. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. We are in the last days. That's why it's imperative that we know prophecy and watch for the signs. Verse 6. Wherein ye greatly rejoice not... Though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. Hmm. So if anybody's saved right now, they're not going through no manifold temptations. And you know why? That means they already have their spiritual perfect body. But we know that nobody has that yet. Because we haven't had the first resurrection. We haven't had the battle of Armageddon. We haven't had the great tribulation. We haven't had that man of sin... The abomination of desolation stand in the holy place that they are going to build. Verse 7, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ appeared, that's when you're going to get your crown. If you've been walking in this thing right. Like I said, it's a big if. Now that was verse 7. Skip down to verse 9. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Mm. Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. Oh, amen, sister, amen. Now, I'm going to read on to verse 13. Verse 11. Searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow unto whom it was revealed that not unto them not unto themselves but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven which 
things the angels desire to look into. Verse 13, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end. Because Jesus tell you, <laughs> he, <laughs> he said, He that endures unto the end, the same shall be saved. We ain't made it to the end yet. He said, Hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And when is that? When the Lord returns. Now, go to the book of Colossians. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians 1. And I'm going to start with verse 1. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 1. Verse 1, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, and Timotheus our brother, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ which are at the Coloss, which are at Coloss, grace be unto you, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God and the Father our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. The book says, pray without ceasing. Verse 4, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which we, ye have to all the saints, for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven. Mm. It's laid up. We hoping to get that. Because it's reserved in heaven for us. We don't have it now. Where, where have ye heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel. Which is, coming, which is coming to you as it is in all the world. And bringeth forth fruit. As it doth also in you since the day ye heard of it. And knew the grace of God and truth. As ye also learned of Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is for you a faithful minister of Christ, who also declared unto us your love in the Spirit. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will, and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Verse 10, that ye might walk worthy of the Lord, unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. And what is the beginning of knowledge? The fear of the Lord. Now, now go back to Peter. Go back to 1 Peter, but go to chapter 3. 1 Peter 3. Verses 1 through 7. 1 Peter 3, beginning with verse 1. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands. Whoa. A lot of people ain't doing that today, are they? We got many. That's why the divorce rate is so high in the world. People are not listening to whom they're supposed to be listening to. They listen to everybody but what the Word of God tells them. It says, wives, listen to your husbands. And we know that common sense tells us that the husbands need to listen to their wives as well. Lord's will, I'm going to show you that. Let me read that again. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. While they behold your chaste conversation, coupled with fear, whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair and of wearing of gold, or putting on of, of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart, and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. For after this manner in the old time, the women, the holy women also, who trusted in God, adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands. But I know when I was little, growing up in the church, you know, a lot of people, a lot of women, they, all, all, they listen to the pastor. They listen to the deacon. They listen to the bishops. But the man of God living right there in their own household, they not listening to him. And the Bible plainly tells us, it tells our women to listen to him. Now, where was I? Uh, okay. Uh, verse 6. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whoa, 
and she called him Lord out of respect. Whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well, and are not afraid with any amazement. Likewise ye husbands. Whoa, see? God is not a respecter of persons. <laughs> he ain't biased. He ain't male chauvinistic either. He says, likewise ye husbands dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life. Heirs together. So does that tell you that uh, women are not going to be in the kingdom? They're not going to get an inheritance? That's not what the book say. It says, heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. And what does this tell us here? If you don't do this, that your prayers re will be hindered. I've seen it. I've experienced it. And I'm sure some of you have too. So that's verse 7. Now, go to the book of Acts. Acts chapter 5. I'll show you something. Acts chapter 5, beginning with verse 1. Because I'm going to show you an example of women in the Bible that did good in the eyes of the Lord. And I'm going to show you examples of women that didn't do right in the eyes of the Lord. I ain't going to be long-winded on it, but I'm going to show you. This is an example of a, somebody, a woman that didn't do right in the eyes of the Lord. Acts chapter 5, beginning with verse 1. Y'all know this story. But a certain man named Ananias, with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why have Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? Mm. Whilst it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. Whoa. <laughs> Verse 5. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. That means he died. Because the Lord is merciful and gracious. However, when you do things contrary to him, he has the power to shorten your life. The Lord ain't playing with people. <laughs> they, they, they think he's a, they think he's a, 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 a pushover. They think they can serve him whatever way they want to, but that's not the case. And we see examples of this all the time. And that was verse 5. I'm going to keep reading. He said, he fell down and gave up the ghost, and great fear came on all them that heard these things. And that's right, because the Lord is our creator. He gave us his precious breath of life in us to do his will. Because anytime you step foot outside of his will, you are in error. We must worship God in spirit and in truth, not in error. Verse 6, and the young man arose, and the young man arose, wound him up, and carried him out, and buried him. And it was about the space of three hours after when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. Verse 8, and Peter, and Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether ye sold the land for so much. And she said, Yeah, for so much. Then Peter said unto her, How is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Hmm. They was in agreement on this thing. <laughs> to be contrary to the Word of God. They think the Lord don't see what they do. But we got people like that today. I'm going to read on. I ain't going to babble. I'm going to try not to anyway. It said, Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door. Now, she don't even know her husband did. <laughs> but he telling her. <laughs> and, and shall carry thee out. Then, she, then fell she down straightway at his feet and yielded up the ghost. She died too. Ain't that so? That's why that great fear came upon the people because they, they heard about this. They knew of this. The Lord is not playing. We see, we see signs and wonders all the time. That people, you know, people say, well, why, why do babies die? Because the Lord may be doing some, allowing things to happen to get our attention. Because we know, I could read you, I could read the scripture where it say, the righteous and the wicked gonna suffer for some of these things because they, because they are going along with wickedness. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? A little leaven, leaven a whole lump. Now, verse, verse 10. Oh, no, I read that already. 
Let me finish it though. Then fell she down straightway at his feet and yielded up the ghost. And the young man came in and found her dead and carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. Hmm. Ain't that a shame? Verse 11. And great fear came upon all the church and upon as many as heard these things. Now, skip all the way down to verse 41 and then we're going to move on. Verse 41. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And daily in the temple and in every house, they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. See, when that fear come on you, that's the, <laughs> the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Now. Uh-oh. <laughs> Bear with me. Technical difficulties. I shouldn't have touched that. That's my tripod. Bear with me, bear with me, bear with me. Thank you. Now, let's go to the next scripture. Let's go to the book of Job. Let's see an exa another example of a woman that uh, <laughs> wasn't right in the eyes of the Lord. Job chapter 1. Now I just showed you an example in the New Testament. I'm going to show you an example in the Old Testament. Job chapter 1 to show you that the word of God don't change. He said, I change not. Hmm. Job chapter 1 and I'm going to start with verse 1. Verses 1 through 3 and I'm going to skip to verse 6. Verse 1, there was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright, and one that feared God, see, and eschewed ye evil. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was seven thousand sheep and three thousand camels and five hundred yoke of oxen and five hundred she asses and a very great household, so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east. Now, skip down to verse 6. Now, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. Whoa. Satan is a son of God? No, he was a son of God. Until he rebelled and got kicked out of heaven. But I'm going to read on verse 7. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and walking up and down in it. Hmm. That's right. He ain't got nothing else to do but to try to vex us every day. Satan and his evil angels never have a day off. So, don't never think for one moment <laughs> he ain't going to try to send something your way to turn from the Lord. That's why we have a daily battle. And Satan cometh immediately when somebody's giving you the truth. Verse 8. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? That there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and ensueth evil. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for naught? He said, Do you fear do Job fear you for nothing? <laughs> Verse 10, has thou has not thou made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thy hand now and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. Whoa. <laughs> nah. I'm, uh, verse 12. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thy hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. Didn't waste no time. Went to go vex Job. Now, nah, skip down to, uh, no, I'm going to read on verse 13. And there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job, Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the asses feeding beside them. And the Sabians fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Uh, verse 16, While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The fire of God is fallen from heaven, 
and have burnt up the sheep and the servants and consumed them, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Verse 17. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The Chaldeans came out three bands and fell upon the camels, and have carried them away, yea, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Hmm. You ever heard of Murphy's Law? <laughs> Murphy's Law say that anything can happen at any given time, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> this is God's law. Because Satan wanted to vex Job, God allowed it. God allowed it to happen. That's why we have to stay strong in this thing. That's why Jesus tell you when he came in the flesh, he said, your hour is always. We never know when, when we're going to take our last breath. That's why we got to walk in this thing right and, and be thankful to the Lord. Don't just call on the Lord when you need him for some help. Call on his, call on his name every day. Every day allow you to wake up. You know, because that's truly a blessing. Now that was verse 17. Uh, I'm going to read on. Verse 18. While he was yet speaking, there came also another. Whoa, back to back to back. So Job was getting vexed in this thing. And what does common man do when he get bombarded with all this stuff? You know, he, he usually fall and, and man, succumb to the wickedness, right? But Job going to stay strong. He says, uh, let, me, let me read verse 19. And behold, there came a great wind from the, from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young men, and they are dead. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Verse 20, then Job arose and rent his, rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped. Mm. So even in the day of trouble, Job stood strong with the Lord. He fell down and started worshipping God, the true and living God. Verse 21, and said, naked came I out of my mother's womb and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And all this Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Now, go over to chapter 2, show you the example of the woman, Job's wife. Show you what she said to him. Job chapter 2, beginning with verse 1. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro in the earth and walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and ensureth evil? And still he holdeth fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath will he give for his life. But pull forth thine hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. Hmm. Verse, verse 6. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. So the Lord allowed Satan, go ahead and vex him some more, but don't kill him. Don't take him out. Verse 7. So went, so went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord. Didn't take no time. Hmm. And smoke Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. Mm. Now, skip down to verse 9. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. Whoa, what kind of woman is that? <laughs> what kind of wife is that to have to tell this man that's going to stand strong through all this affliction to curse God and die? Mm. You know Satan had to be uh, in her, right? Said, curse God and die. <laughs> Verse 10, but he said unto her, thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. Whoa. <laughs> uh, what? Shall we receive good at the hand of God and shall we not receive evil? And all this did not Job sin with his lips. So Job stood fast, even though his wife in his own household said, Curse, curse God and die. Now that's some evil. 
Now, I'm going to show you, uh, what was that? Show you an example of women or women that are, are right in the eyes of the Lord. Acts chapter 18. Back to the New Testament, Acts chapter 18. Beginning with verse 1. Verses 1 through 4, and I'm going to skip to verse, thir uh, verse 18. Verse 1. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth and found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome and came unto them. And because he was of the same craft, he abode with them and wrought, for by their occupation they were tent makers. Verse 4. And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. Whoa. Hold up. Today's Sunday, right? Did it say he, Paul reasoned in the synagogue every Sunday? No, I didn't say that, did it? <laughs> you already know. That's another lesson. Now, that was verse 4, right? Skip down to verse 18. Let me try to try to get through this. Verse 18, and Paul after this tarried yet there, there yet a good while and then took his leave of the brethren and sailed thence into Syria and with him Priscilla and Aquila having shorn his head in Centraea for he had a vow and he came to Ephesus and left them there but he himself entered into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. When they desired him to tarry longer time with them he consented not. But bade them farewell, saying, I must by all means keep this feast that cometh in Jerusalem. Mm. And this is after Jesus died, right? Still keeping the feast day, still keeping the Sabbath, etc., etc. But I will return again unto you, if God will. And he sailed from Ephesus. Now, skip down to verse 24. And a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man, and mighty in the scriptures came to Ephesus. Now this man was mighty in the scriptures. So he knew scripture, right? Said he was mighty in the scriptures. Verse 25. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord. And being fervent in the spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord. Knowing only the baptism of John. Whoa. So he was strong in the scriptures, but he was lacking a little something. Look what uh, Priscilla and Aquila do. Verse 26. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue. Whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. Because it said he only knew the baptism of John. Scriptures show you also that it was some other brothers, they only knew the baptism of John and they had to get baptized again. Just like this going to happen to this brother. But, let's see, for sake of time, that was verse 26. Let's go to... Uh, Let's go to Second Chronicles. Show you another another example of a good woman in the Word of God. And these women, that's all the women of the Bible, like uh, Rahab the harlot, <coughs> Ruth, Hadassah, better known as Esther, Deborah or Deborah, Rebecca, Sarah. You think they ain't gonna get a shot into the kingdom <laughs> with the good they did? I don't know where people coming up with these with these uh, misconceptions, but uh, that's why it's imperative we read it for ourselves. What I say, Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles thirty four, Second Chronicles thirty four, and this is talking about Huldah, because Josiah had found the book of the law, and when he heard the words read to him out of the book of the law, he rent his clothes because he found out. They was doing a bunch of things that was contrary to God. So he knew they had to change. Second Chronicles 34, and I'm going to start with verse 18. Then Shaphan the scribe told the king, saying, Hilkiah the priest have given me a book. And Shaphan read it before the king. And it came to pass when the king had heard the words of the law that he rent his clothes. Verse 20, and the king commanded Hilkiah and a and Ahikim the son of Shaphan, and Abdon the son of Micah, and Shaphan the scribe, and Asiah, a servant of the king, saying, Go inquire of the Lord for me, and for them that are left in, Jeru in Israel and in Judah, concerning the words of the book that is found. For great is the wrath of the Lord. 
that is poured out upon us because our fathers have not kept the word of the Lord. That's right. In the book of Deuteronomy, it says, teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons. Scriptures also tell you, train up a child in the way he should go. And what better way to train up a child in the way of the Lord? But obviously, this, this didn't trickle down to their generation. Okay. It said, because our fathers have not kept the word of the Lord to do after all that is written in this book. Now, verse 22, and Hilkiah and they that the king had appointed went to hold of the prophetess. Whoa. <laughs> they went to who? They went to hold of the prophetess. But keep game. Said the wife of Shalom, the son of Tikvah, the son of Hasra, keeper of the wardrobe. Now she dwelt in Jerusalem in the college, and they spake to her to that effect. Now, you see this, uh, see my portable DVD play? I was going to go to one of my favorite movies, The Matrix, to show you that Neo and Morpheus, what did they do? We all seen it, right? They went to, to the Oracle. And the Oracle was represented by who? A sister, right? Just go to show you that the worldwide media, they know who are the true people of God. <laughs> she was a sister, right? But for sake of time, I'm going to go ahead on. So they went to, the king told them to go to Holder, which was an Israelite, which gave them something they already should have known by reading this book. They already should know what they what they had to do. But uh, I guess they needed a little more insight or <laughs> motivation. Now, verse, skip down to verse 27. Because thine heart, this is what Holder was telling them. Because thine heart was tender, and thou didst humble thyself before God, when thou heardest his words against this place, and against the inhabitants thereof, and humbled thyself before me, and didst rent thy clothes, and weep before me, I have even heard thee also, saith the Lord. Because the scriptures say, the prayer of a sinner is an abomination unto the Lord. Unless that sinner is really, truly trying to make some repentance. The Lord ain't going to hear it unless they really try. Now, okay. Now, let's go, since we're in the Old Testament already, let's go to Numbers 27. I want to show you something. I'm almost done. Bear with me. Numbers 27. Numbers 27 beginning with verse 1. Then came the daughters of Zelophadad, the son of Hefer, the son of Gilead, the son of Machir, the son of Manasseh, of the families of Manasseh, the son of Joseph. And these are the names of his daughters, Mala, Noah, and Hogla, and Milka, and Terza. And they stood before Moses and before Eleazar the priest, and before the princes and all the congregations by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, saying, Our father died in the wilderness, and he was not in the company of them that gathered themselves together against the Lord, in the company of Korah, but died in his own sin and had no son. Now, verse 4, why should the name of our father be done away from among his family because he hath no son? Give unto us, therefore, a possession among the brethren of our father. Verse, verse 5, and Moses brought their, cake, their cause before the Lord. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, now the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, verse 7, the daughters of Zelophehad speak right. Thou shalt surely give them a possession of an inheritance among their father's brethren. So, why are my Hebrew brothers and sisters promoting this thing about women not going to make it into the kingdom? Part of our inheritance is making it into the kingdom, right? That's male and female, right? But I'm showing you what scriptures say. Let me, let me read that again. The, the, verse 7. The daughters of Zelophehad speak right. Thou shalt surely give them a possession of an inheritance among their father's brethren, and thou shalt cause the inheritance of their father to pass unto them. Whoa. Uh, verse 8. 
And thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a man die and have no son, then ye shall cause his inheritance to pass unto his daughter. Boom. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. Go to New Testament, John chapter 11. Now I took you in a roundabout way just to show you examples. Because there's a lot of false doctrine in the world and we have to clear it up. It's just that simple. Because a lie make it around the world quicker than the truth. And it's a shame. Uh, John chapter 11. Begin with verse 17. John 11, 17. Then when Jesus came, he found that he had lying in the grave four days already. This is talking about Lazarus. Now Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem, about 15 furlongs off. And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary, those are Lazarus' sisters, to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus said unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Whoa! That's wisdom, man. <laughs> she knows some scripture. That's why the book says, Who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption, and the glory, and the covenants, and the giving of the law, and the service of God, and the promises. You Israel, you're supposed to know this thing. And scripture says, in Lord's will, I'm going to show you that, that God is not a respecter of persons. You can be spiritual Israel as well, if you walking in the law, statutes, and commandments. Well, let me read on. I'm going to try not to babble no more. Uh, verse 25, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection. Whoa, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> he is the resurrection. And I'm going to show you, if, if it's in here, that Jesus had to call Lazarus by name. Otherwise, everybody that ever died would raise up. You know, but it's not time yet for that. He said the dead in Christ shall rise first, right? That's book. Let me read on now. Verse 25, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Mm. Believeth thou this? She said unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. And when she had said, so, so said, she went away and called Mary her sister secretly, saying, The Master is come, and calleth for thee. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came unto him. So, you think Martha and Mary, Lazarus' sisters, ain't going to make it into the kingdom? You know, what's up with this male chauvinistic view of the truth? You know what I'm saying? Everybody on this planet that's alive got a chance to make it in God's kingdom. If they, if they turn to the Lord. You know, it don't, it don't matter what color you are. It don't matter what gender you are. You know what I'm saying? Male or female. We all got a shot in this kingdom. Why people, why people don't see that? It's plain and simple. Right? Now, go to Romans 16. Just a few verses there. 1 through 4. Romans 16. 1 through 4. Verse 1. I commend unto you Phoebe, our sister, which is a servant of the church, which is at Centraea, that ye receive her in the Lord as become a saints, and that ye assist her in whatsoever business she have need of you. For she hath been a succorer of many, and of myself also. Verse 3. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Christ Jesus. Whoa, mentioned that before, right? Read that before. About Priscilla and Aquila. Verse 4 who have for my life laid down their own necks, unto whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. So they got a shot, whether people like it or not. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, let me show you one more example. Let me see. That was uh, 
Well, before before that, just a few more verses. Go to go to Old Testament. One verse here. Isaiah chapter thirteen. Isaiah thirteen. I want to show you something that that is also twisted and misconcepted. <laughs> well, is is a misconception. Isaiah chapter thirteen, verse twelve. Maybe this is where they get this from. I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. Mm. Now we know that's very rare, right? Because you don't even know what that is, or, or you most people ain't ever seen that, right? So they say you're gonna make a man more precious than fine gold, even the golden wedge of Ophir. Now, go to Isaiah chapter four. Back a few chapters, Isaiah four. One verse here, verse one. And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. Whoa. <laughs> but, does that mean that the women ain't going to get into the kingdom? No, that's not what they're saying. You see, at the bottom of verse one, it says to take away our reproach. Go to the New Testament. Go to Luke chapter one. Show you somebody else who had reproach. Luke chapter 1, beginning with verse 18. And Zechariah said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife well stricken in years. This is John the Baptist's parents. Verse 19. And the angel answering said unto him, I am Gabriel that stand in the presence of God, and am sent to speak unto thee, and to show thee these glad tidings. Verse, verse 20. And behold, thou shalt be dumb and not be not able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed, because thou believest not my words. Mm. See what the Lord will do because of unbelief, which shall be fulfilled in their seasons. Verse 21. And the people waited for Zacharias and marveled that he tarried so long in the temple. And when he came out, he could not speak unto them. And they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple, for he beckoned unto them and remained speechless. And it came to pass that as soon as the days of his ministration were accomplished, he departed to his own house. And after those days his wife Elizabeth conceived and hid herself five months, saying, Thus hath the Lord dealt with me in the days wherein he looked on me to take away my reproach from men, from among men. So, the Lord is merciful and gracious. We've seen examples with Sarah and Abraham that they was able to, with through their faith, they were able to conceive child in their old age. Same thing here in the New Testament with Zacharias and Elizabeth. So many women, I had a, wait, what's this? See, this is a book called All the Women of the Bible. You think that all the women of the Bible don't have any significance? You think that it's just going to be all men reigning with Christ in the kingdom? If that's what you think, you know, who told you that? We got we to gotta open our eyes to some things. Uh, let me see. Go to 1 Peter chapter 3 again. 1 Peter chapter 3. That's before you get the first John and 2 Peter. Two verses here, 8 and 9. Finally, be all of one mind, mm. having compassion one of another. Love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous, not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrarywise blessing, knowing that ye are the... Ye are thereunto called that ye should inherit a blessing. And what blessing is that? Eternal life. And that's everybody. Verse 10. Oh, I said only two verses. Well, I'm going to read verse 10. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no God. Because to say that only men is going to be in God's kingdom and not the women, that's speaking evil. 
You know, it don't make sense. It don't make common sense. Uh, so, I had a little bit more, but I've been a bit long-winded. Grace and peace multiply unto you and yours in knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the Most High God, Jesus Christ the Messiah. I thank you for your time. I hope somebody got some understanding. Peace.